Hello and welcome back to this video series where we're looking at building an e-commerce platform in 25 days using Next, Netlify, and Stripe. So our application is looking really good. We've got all of our pages. We can add items to the cart. Um, the last part that we need to build is actually charging a customer uh, for those products. So in order to build that, that last little piece and interact with Stripe to charge that card, um, we're going to need a little bit of server-side code to accomplish that. So we're going to use Netlify functions to take that, that server-side code that we need to write and turn it into a serverless function, uh, which we can just execute off in the cloud and we don't need to worry about it anymore. So the first thing we are going to do is install a package called Netlify CLI, um, but we're going to install this globally, uh, which is going to give us access to the CLI, but it's not, not attached to our project. Um, it's just going to install it on our computer. Okay, cool. So now we're going to head back over to our application and we're going to create a new uh, configuration file for Netlify called netlify.toml. And in here, we can specify some um, configuration options for Netlify for how we want to build our application. Um, so we need to tell it where our functions folder is going to be so that it can take those JavaScript files and turn them into serverless functions. So now we need to create that functions folder here in our directory. And now inside that functions folder, I'm just going to create a JavaScript file called charge card. And then I'm just going to build out the boilerplate for a serverless function. Okay, so we're just exporting a handler function from this, from this file. And that's just an async arrow function where we can uh, do all of our server-side code. Um, so for example, this is where we would be talking to Stripe and charging the actual card. Um, and then we return from the arrow function what we actually want to send back as a response. So in this case, we're sending back a status 200, which just means everything is all good, everything went well. And then we send back a body, uh, which has any information that we might need uh, for the client. Okay, so in order to test this locally, uh, we are going to use that Netlify um, CLI we just installed, and we're going to run Netlify dev. So by running Netlify dev, it's going to go off and run our npm run dev command to get our next uh, application running, but it's also going to add some additional stuff that exists in that Netlify environment. So this is going to be as close as possible to our actual um, production environment where our application is going to be running. And you'll see here that it's running on 8888. So before we were running on port 3000, um, our next app is still running on port 3000. But if we want access to any of those extra bits, like the serverless functions, we need to do that over port 8888. So now in order to run our serverless function, we go to slash dot Netlify slash functions, and then slash whatever we called our function. So in this case, it was create, uh, sorry, charge card. And there you'll see that message, I have charged that card. And if we head back to uh, VS Code, and if we change this to I have charged this card, that card many times, uh, then when we refresh, we'll see that message. So that Netlify dev command is now still listening to changes in our web server. So if we change anything uh, in our UI, it's going to automatically refresh. Um, but it's also listening to changes in that functions folder. So anytime we make a change to any of our serverless functions, it's going to rebuild those functions and allow us to call them over port 8888. Okay, so let's build the functionality to be able to actually send across the state of our cart to this serverless function. So we can actually send which items the, the customer would like to purchase. So if we head back to our application and we say we want a couple of basketball hoops and some cooking classes, um, we then go to our checkout. And when we click this process payment button, we want to send uh, the fact that we want to buy two basketball hoops and one cooking classes. Okay, so here in our checkout page, this is where we have that button and we're processing that payment. Um, so this process payment function is where we're going to uh, actually make a request to our serverless function and send across uh, the state of our cart. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import Axios up the top here. And then if we come back down to our function, uh, we need to make this an async function because we're going to be doing some asynchronous stuff, sending a request with Axios. And then we're going to say const data is equal to await 
Axios. And then rather than doing a get request, which is what we did uh, previously, we're going to do a post request. So a post request um, allows us to send a body across. So since we want to send additional data, like the state of our cart, we need to use a post and then we're going to post to the URL. We'll worry about that in a second. Um, and we're just going to send across our cart. So this cart here. Um, so let's declare that URL. Again, that's just going to be the slash Netlify slash functions slash charge card. Okay, cool. So now in our charge card, we probably uh, want a way to, to make sure that we're actually getting that state. And so remember, we're getting this event and context here. Um, so we could console log out what our event is. So to trigger that request, we're going to click process payment. And then if we head back to our terminal, we should see that whole big event. And so we have all kinds of information in there, but you'll see we have this uh, convenient body part here, which has um, the state of our cart. So if we were to just print out event.body, and now if we trigger that uh, payment again, um, we should just see this object here um, with our cart, which is that big array. And you'll see this is the stringified version. So um, when, it, when it's sent, when, when Axios has sent this uh, request, it's automatically stringified that big JSON object. But inside each of our objects, we have ID, we have name, we have description, we have all of the information about um, our, our products that we want to buy. So that's awesome that we have all of this data. Um, but if this is coming from our client, coming from the front end, um, we basically can never trust uh, that that hasn't been tinkered with. Because if we if we come to uh, our application here and we were to like select some price and then we were like, you know what, we don't, we don't like that price. $200, that's too expensive. I just want it to be $20. Uh, and then the DOM will update. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, mess with um, a web page from the client because it, it's running in your browser. Like if we were to refresh this, obviously that that hasn't changed the price on our on our server. But yeah, so we don't we don't really want to trust uh, anything that the client is sending us in case they've tinkered with it. Um, the only thing that we really uh, want to trust from them is the ID of the product that they want to purchase and how many they want to purchase. So if they want to purchase two of ID three or whatever the basketball hoop is, we can trust that information because that's that's what they're saying they want to buy. But then things like the name of the product and the price of the product and all that extra data, um, we probably want to fetch that again on the server side to make sure that it hasn't been tinkered with. So back in our process payment function, just before we send across that cart, um, we're just gonna pull out the ID and quantity for each of those products. Okay, so now we can just create a new cart where we're mapping over each of our products. We're just destructuring off ID and quantity, and then that's what we're returning um, from our map. So just each object with just an ID and a quantity. So then we're assigning that to new cart. And then here where we're passing across cart, we just want to pass across uh, new cart instead of our, our, our full cart. And then if we go and trigger that functionality again and look at our terminal, you'll see that we have our cart and now we just have IDs and quantities. Um, and this, this is more efficient as well, rather than just posting across all of this stuff and then throwing away all the bits that we don't care about. If we strip it down to just the bits that we trust, then we're not sending all this extra data um, across from our client to our API. So now that we have that event body, um, which, is, which is our cart, we can pull our cart out of that. So we can say const cart is equal to event.body. And then we basically want to take our array of just IDs and quantities, and we want to turn it back into um, our full product. And so from our serverless function, we could uh, load in each of our markdown files um, and then find which markdown file has the extra data. So then we want to take our array of uh, IDs and quantities, and then we want to uh, go back to the file system and go from our function up to uh, our content folder and then find uh, more information about that particular product. So we've already done a lot of this logic over in our index.js file. Um, so down here in get static props, we are reading from the directory, grabbing all the file names and then iterating over those products and, and pulling out the content. Um, so we could do something similar in our charge card function.
So the first thing we are going to do is uh, import our FS module. So one annoying difference here is that we can't actually use this import syntax um, because these serverless functions are running in a node environment. Um, and so this is, uh, yeah, a particular type of module import called ES modules, and this is uh, CommonJS. And so we just need to, rather than say import FS from FS, we just need to say const FS uh, equals require and then pass that FS into that function. Cool, so then I'm just going to create uh, a function called get products and paste in that logic there. And then uh, we don't care about this slug stuff, so we can get rid of this, which means we don't need to construct a new product here. Um, we probably only really care about the data because that's that's the front matter at the top. So that's gonna give us our name, our price, and all those, those bits that we care about. Um, so we could just return data from here. And then what we want to return from that get products function is uh, that whole uh, collection of products. So I'm gonna return products down here. Okay, so then in our inside our function, we can say const products equals get products. And then let's just console log those out so we can see what we have. And we have failed with a status code 500. So that means that something has happened on our server side. So let's check um, our terminal. Ah, yeah, it's saying matter is not defined. And so inside our um, function here that we wrote, we're using this matter function, um, but we haven't imported that at the top. So here we're just gonna say const matter equals require matter. Okay, so now let's try and process our payment again, and we're getting 500, another 500. Uh, if we scroll up through this whole big mess, uh, it's saying error, cannot find module matter. Ah, this is because it's not, the package is not called matter, the package is called gray matter. Okay, so now let's head back to our application and try and process our payment again, and we don't get any errors, so that's good. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, awesome, we're getting uh, the full content of each of those files. Cool, so now we just need to merge um, our two arrays together. So down here where we have uh, our cart, so this is an array of just IDs and quantities, and then products here uh, is an array of all of the data of all of our products, regardless of whether they're in the cart. Okay, so let's create a new variable uh, called cart with products. And then that's going to be equal, equal to us mapping over our cart. Um, and then we get a product and we want to return some stuff. Um, so again, because we only care about the quantity and ID from here, we can destructure those off um, from uh, the full product that's getting passed into this function. And then in here, we can find uh, that particular product in our products array. So we wanna find the product where the uh, product ID matches uh, the ID that we're currently looking at. So this ID inside the cart. Okay, so then we have a whole product. So that's got our name and description and um, price and things like that that we care about. Uh, so now we are just going to return all those bits from product. And then we're also just gonna um, spread in quantity and ID. So, I mean, ID is going to be the same here, so we could we could get rid of this. Um, so we just spread in our product and then uh, the quantity that our customer actually cares about. Okay, so now instead of console logging out products, let's console log out our cart with products. Ah, we're getting a 500 again. So let's have a look at this error. It's saying cannot read property map of undefined. Um, so I guess this has to do with our cart because we're trying to map over our cart. Ah, so this this is the problem is, uh, remember before how I said that event.body uh, had turned our big cart into a stringified version of that cart? So this body is just a big string. Um, so we can't destructure out um, something from an object when uh, it's not actually an object yet, it's a string. Um, so we could actually just do uh, json.pass so we want to turn that event.body back into a JSON object. And then once we have the JSON object, we can pull the cart off it there. All right, let's see if that is happy now. Cool, no complaints there, that's good. 
Awesome. And then here we've got uh, each of our objects, but just the objects in our cart. So we're not we're not worrying about all of the products, just the ones that our customer wants to purchase. So we have our full object for basketball hoop. We have our full object for cooking classes, um, and we've spread in uh, that quantity. Okay, awesome. So just to quickly review, because we, we kind of jumped around a little bit there, um, we've created this new functions folder, which allow us to write JavaScript files with functions in them. And then they're going to get turned into magical serverless functions by Netlify, which means we can write um, some server side logic, but not need to maintain our own server that's always on. We can just create these serverless functions that just kind of spin up when we actually need them. The next thing we did is we wired up our checkout to actually pass across those cart items. Um, and because we don't trust what's coming from the front end, we only told it to send us the ID and the quantity. And then over on our server side, um, we iterated over all of those um, products in our content folder, all of those markdown files. We turned that into um, a big array of product objects. Um, and then we reconstructed that with the quantity um, that the user passed us. So now we can trust the important things like price from our product. Uh, we know that that hasn't been tinkered with on the on the client side of things. So now we've got our, um, our price that's coming from our server side logic and our quantity that's coming from our client. And we can combine those two together to actually tell Stripe how much we want to charge that customer. Awesome, that's it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna look at actually creating a Stripe account. I'll see you there.